We go to water, and before we go to water, because we had some rain on our heads, I would invite you to close your eyes and think of uh, this water that is dropping down now on the earth. Where, wh what's its travel? Oh no. Where did it come from and where does it go? And all this, don't cheat and look at just close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe follow one droplet and then see its journey and where does it uh, pass from and... It goes uh, down... <laughs> Okay, we just have to think about yeah, it. Yeah, just think about it. Just uh, give it some time. It's a long journey. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe think until it becomes a drop again. <laughs> Such a long journey. <laughs> so slowly, slowly, the journey is, is finishing. And once it was a drop, and now it's again a drop. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, who of you have heard of the, uh, or maybe taught in school, because I think I have, but I didn't remember, uh, uh, was taught of the hydrological cycle? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I just, <laughs> so, I just skip it, no? We all remember. Okay, who would like to describe the hydrological cycle? <laughs> yes? Go about that. I heard you are a teacher, so you have it very recent. Well, not recent, but I remember like the cycle. So the, it drops, and then, well, I, I, can, I can say how I imagined it, and some of it goes with the circle. So it goes to the ground, and then I imagine going to an underground water, <laughs> and then it, it goes to a river, a confluence, I don't know, a sea, and then by vapor it goes again to the clouds. Uh-huh. Okay. And uh, is it the only possibility of the journey, or do you think there is more possibilities? There, is there, are, there are more possibilities. There are more. Can you describe more possibilities? I can't remember now. But, yeah. uh, for example, it uh, drops like a rain uh -huh. and go uh, into ground, and um, uh, uh, plants are taking that water also. Uh, we ate plants or animal ate plants and through and we ate animal and plants and that water comes to our body and with sweating it also goes up. So okay. there is a lot of different uh, ways. That's another cycle. Can somebody describe another cycle? Evaporates from the ground. <laughs> what it is? Evaporates from it the ground. It evaporates from I, the I ground. Mean from everything because every living thing on this planet has uh, 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 some amount of water inside it, our body. So that's uh -huh. basic, basic element of no, um, hydrogen and oxygen. Mm -hmm. Good. That's for the trees. What? From the trees. From the trees? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the what ice. is called transpiration? Yeah. Yeah. Melting of the ice. Melting of the ice. Mm -hmm. I was thinking what Milica say, but not evaporates from the skin, but do we do pee pee. Yes. And then it goes also. into the ground, and then it goes into the sea, and it evaporates from there. Uh -huh. Okay. And now it pieces on us. <laughs> <laughs> Peace on you. <laughs> we were very happy with getting all this peace from the <laughs> Any more cycles? No, but actually from all plants, gets, yes. like in the photosynthesis uh, cycle, there is a bit of uh, waste uh, water from, uh, yeah, so all plants release a bit of water. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Inspiration. Okay, pretty much it, it's described, but I'm just gonna, with my beautiful drawing, uh, I will uh, make it a bit uh, Thank you very much. You were the only one who, who <laughs> celebrated my drawing. <laughs> <laughs> Took me some time. Uh, okay, so um, just describing it all, and maybe using some more technical terms. Uh, so let's start from clouds. So clouds are con uh, condensated vapor, and then once 
many things happen. There is precipitation, that is what we know as, as rain. And uh, once it falls to the ground, depending on what kind of ground and what kind of vegetation there is there, you'll have th there is two options. Both of them happen most of the times, but uh, like let's say there is two ways for the for the water. One is infiltration, so it infiltrates inside the the earth, and once once it's saturated um, by the water, then the, many things happen on the surface, and then it, it's absorbed, but after one limit, this cannot be absorbed anymore, and then it goes. Then we say we have a runoff. Okay, inside this runoff, many times there is also erosion, and until a point, erosion is something natural. It's a natural pattern. Okay, until a point, it used to happen anyway, but now it's an accelerated pattern. It's something that happens more than we want it, that it used to happen. Okay, erosion is not something we should stop erosion at all like it's you we cannot even if we wanted to okay so bare soil bare soil without any vegetation is more easy that it cannot infiltrate water so there is lots of runoff in bare soil that's why you would go now in rivers and you will see rivers colored with the color of the soil and this is pure erosion but it's also linked with the, this kind of change in the way we have rain now that we have... Uh, yes, the there is many time. factors about if the water in this point will be infiltrated or not be infiltrated. So it's uh, how, how long was it dry before, um, uh, if there is organic matter or not, there's many reasons why there is the erosion. And more erosion now than before. Yes, and more erosion now than before. Uh, one huge problem in Greece is also the over pasturing of land mm -hmm. by wild uh, by animals by goats and many more and many more okay so we have two ways infiltration runoff so runoff slowly slowly guides itself to rivers or um, dry rivers that are once they're once off like they don't maintain themselves as rivers throughout the whole year and then the infiltration a uh, um, sometimes, if it's not absorbed back by the plants, goes down to the groundwater, okay, uh, or the aquatic uh, line. Maybe my, my English terms are not the best, but uh, you, you, you understand what I'm talking about. Um, so this groundwater, you can imagine it as an underground river, is not that, is not just a river, there is many aquatic lines under the surface that we cannot imagine. Uh, but it's, it's down from the earth. And many times this groundwater meets the land and this is where we have springs. Okay, so this is where we have fresh water. This is actually where our drinkable water comes from. It's infiltrated in the water and then out again. This was actually something that as a kid I didn't have no clue that it happens like that. Yeah, uh, this is something very interesting in this region. Uh, if you look at our map, uh, just around 30 and 50 kilometers from the from the shore, there is a spring line, mm. and uh, there are so many that the, um, the houses uh, they are not con linked uh, to the municipal water because mm. they have the fresh water in their house uh, to do all the things and so on, mm. and also drink is very very clean. And then there is also uh, a tension with the, with the state or with the municipality because they want to to have the water not uh, uh, from the springs uh, but to link to the national grid. Yeah. There was a huge popular uh, movement against uh, this, uh, these things. And also because we are taking a lot of water, especially for agriculture, the springs, they have to pump the water always deeper and deeper. Yeah. Because there is less water. So now what we do, because we're so clever, and we don't have enough springs, is that we go down and we take the water from the aquifer. And what's happening when you go, we take water from the aquifer, the aquifer goes lower. So the lower it goes, the springs dry out. And this is an erosive pattern. You go deeper, and this is, this goes deeper, and then goes deeper, and goes deeper, and goes deeper, until you have seawater coming inside, 
and what you thought it was drinkable water, now it's mixed seawater with drinkable water. And this is a huge problem for agriculture, also for us, but first for the agriculturers. It's mixed with the seawater because it goes down. Yeah, because it goes so yeah. down that so it's connected it with the sea. Allows the salty water to enter. To mm -hmm. enter. Because it goes below. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So what we try to do, which what I will mention uh, afterwards about the mindset of water retention in permaculture, is that we are trying to bring the re regenerate the aquifer. So as we talked about regenerating the soil. What we try to do with water earthworks in permaculture is to regenerate the aquifer and bring it higher, closer to the roots, more available to us, more springs, more rivers alive, etc., etc. Okay? There was a question? No. Uh, so, runoff, rivers, groundwater, reaching to the sea or reaching to lakes, and then, as you all know, from the evaporation, either from lakes or from the sea, goes back to the um, as uh, vapors, as to clouds, or by transpiration by the, by the trees. And then back again, and back again. And this, there is also some small things that are not mentioned here, that for example, lots of the fresh water um, uh, that comes to the ground is also by humidity. So the, there is humidity that sticks on leaves of the plants and or buildings or whatever, and then it's liquefied and then becomes water on the ground. It doesn't have to rain in order to have water. Okay? Um, also, there is small circles, like there is a forest here, there's a lake here, and then it evaporates and then it rains here, and then you create a micro cycle of water, and it is also like making the cycle smaller until you wait for this whole thing to happen or to have fresh water you create microsystems where you actually attract rain that's why they say when you plant trees you make rain <laughs> maybe you have heard about that the, the forest people say the forest attract rain yeah. forest attract rain for many reasons how the wind is stopped how the humidity is stopped inside the forest etc etc i'm not gonna go very deep but Keep in mind that forest and vegetation actually attracts humidity, attracts water, and you have actually water retention. Um, so you already knew that. I didn't say anything new, no? You can mention also that the trees, uh, the root system... Uh, uh, it's the best peaks. pumps in the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are the zero energy pumps. So... Solution to many problems and many energetic problems. I yeah. To add something, many times I see that uh, uh, also we as well here uh, we are mentioning uh, constantly erosion in a bad way, but erosion in, is a good process in a normal natural world without humans. Mm -hmm. So without erosion, we wouldn't have some geomorphic uh, landscapes. Mm. And it is very important for how the world looks today. Mm -hmm. So erosion is good, but not so intense. And on intensity of erosion, uh, stronger influence. Mm -hmm. We have very strong influence to that. So I don't want to people think that uh, uh, we have to completely stop the erosion because we need that process in small amount because yeah. there is some mm -hmm. natural need to, to for that soil and, and different uh, substances to, to go up and down through the, through the surface of the area. So. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's true. Thank you for mentioning. <laughs> yeah, Gabriel. Yeah, also like mountains are very good like water storage is... Uh, right. Because I was in like in this part of Italy where they want to build uh, a tunnel in a mountain mm -hmm. and one of the forestry guard was saying that if they uh, like make a hole in the mountain, all the water will just fall and all the ecosystem will just dry out and mm -hmm. die. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So why? Ah, yeah. oh, sorry, I didn't see you. Uh, I'm gonna add something actually to the comment. Normally, erosion actually is not normal. Press. I mean, is normal? Is not normal because uh, when the Okay, you know the trees are everything like when people start to cut the trees and everything in the forest, then erosion started actually. You know, actually it's a normal, the natural process of the ecosystem. 
I think so. I guess I know it is. So it actually is not normal. It, yeah, it's it's a bit of technical thing to go inside. Is yeah, that can the, I say something yes, very go for it. Uh, actually, the planet as it is at the moment, even with our present or without us, is changing constantly. So, anyways, change happens. Erosion or movement of soils around. <coughs> something that is happening. Mm -hmm. The problematic, let's say, thing is the rhythm. Is like, for example, now is a also a very fancy uh, word. I don't know how to say, but like human presence is influencing the geology. So, for example, Anthropocene mm -hmm. is called yes, the geology. Yeah. Uh, so, for example, like for something to, to go from the top of the mountain to the middle of the sea might need million years. Like we have done it in three summers. Mm -hmm. This is erosion, practically. The acceleration of the rhythm of changing the, of landscape. Changing the landscape. Yeah. And if I may add one more thing that uh, I find we don't take in consideration is that we are at the same time doing this and at the same time diminishing Earth's capacity to amortize, to amortize mm -hmm. the things. Because before people say we had these kind of changes, Earth goes through that, yes, but we had uh, oceans that were 10 times more with a bigger capacity. We had much more whales, we had yes. much more forests, we mm. had much more, so it, there was much bigger capacity to do this kind of, when there is this yeah. that comes, it's much more biomass mm -hmm. and so on. Uh, Sorry, continue. I don't yeah. really understand how we accelerate the process? Uh, you, you will say... Yeah, just a very simple pattern, for example, is that once uh, on a mountain hill, there was a forest, okay? So this forest has the capacity not only in, uh, to, to help the infiltration of water, but also hold the soil, okay? So once this is off and the roots are like, off... Like, for example, it's burned from a wildfire or yes. from a putted fire or for example someone go and beat the house illegally or uh, for example the state decide to make a road or for example uh, like uh, now is a fancy thing to build this huge uh, wind turbines on the top of the mountains like, this is an action that actually accelerating the process like when we mm -hmm. go that was only forest and we do something or yes so once once the once the tree is out the roots are out, so you have neither a supporting mechanism for the, for the soil to stay in its place, and you also don't have the, the same amount of infiltration, because annual plants have such a small root compared to trees' roots, which are actually diodes for the water to go inside the soil. So this is a one way that erosion is being accelerated, while it did happen, erosion, but a very small amount of the top soil. One more reason we don't want erosion is actually very selfish. It's what we said before. We don't want topsoil to be lost. Why? Because we're actually doing agriculture on that. So it's quite selfish also that we want to maintain the good soil that we have on Earth and not go to the sea. It's, it's as, as simple as that. Be, up before actually saying about mountains and wildlife, etc., etc., is, that's why it's also very relevant to talk about that permaculture in our gardens and our landscapes and our big fields and farms, etc., etc. You want erosion to stop because you're losing the capacity to grow things on it. It's, it's as simple as that. So then, we go back to the question, what can we do about it? Okay, so there's some three, let's say, main um, um, techniques, very wide. Uh, but I'm going to give some examples of what we can do to stop the erosive pattern of water. Okay, so one thing is to slow it down. Okay, so then I just put also a um, snake-like uh, figure just to give to you your image that we probably already have that rivers, at some point, they used to have this shape. Always. Always. I don't know always, but <laughs> this is was their natural pattern. Why? Because the water likes to travel this way. Why? Because in this way it travels slower and there is slower erosion and then it finds its easier way to go. 
straight way, it's not the easier way. It's the most destructive way for water to go through a landscape. Mm -hmm. Okay? So how you can do that? If you have a river passing by or you have a small um, thing, a small, not a river, but small stream passing by, you try to make this uh, kind of with putting blocks of uh, with wood or with... Uh, with uh, rocks and then creating and slowing down the water as it goes through the land, probably on a hill. Okay, so that's one way to do it. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to bring an example. For example, my, my father's, my grandfather's land is built, uh, my grandfather's uh, house is built on one of these edges. And what they did anciently is that they they, they, they changed the, the shape of the river because they wanted to build houses on top of it. Now, after 20, 30 years, the river once, with a destructive uh, rainfall, came back to its natural shape. Mm. And all the land that was destroyed. And people were saying, oh, it's climate change. Oh, it's blah, 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 blah. No, it's human, it's human stupidity that knew how the shape of the river was and they stopped it from being how it was naturally done. And nature will return to its natural shape. And we don't have the strength until now to maintain it this way. So we better go this way, otherwise we're just doing something against it. Yeah, we had it in Turkey. Yeah, it's very common. Floods, floods are not only uh, climate change problems because of sudden rainfalls. No, it's human stupidity intervening on uh, rivers that we don't know what will be the, the um, impact of it. Not only on wildlife, but also on the flow of the water. Okay, just to mention just one example. Okay, ah, okay. so another one is uh, how to stop erosion on mountain hills. Okay, then I was mentioned just on the on the foot with Dasha. My favorite technique, very simple one, is what they call swales. I don't know if you have heard before of swales. So swales is actually um, uh, digged uh, trenches, trenches like hot and big holes uh, like on a canal. like a canal on on um, on a mountain hill or on a hill, just a small hill where there is slope in order to stop the water by getting out from the, from the landscape. This you can do also in a garden. Eh? I'm not talking about something super huge. This is a very simple technique. Why this trench is very effective? Because it's on contour. Contour? Mm -hmm. Okay, in Contour is the level... Okay, so contour is the level of uh, height from the sea. Oh. So let's say that this peak is 2,000 meters. Oh, okay. But then you go on a mountain and you say 1,000 meters, there is many points mm -hmm. that it's on 2,000 meters. Mm -hmm. You can go along and probably it goes like that on the landscape. Mm -hmm. Okay? If you take in a trekking map, mm -hmm. you, you've seen a trekking map? Mm -hmm. No? Mm -hmm. Many times the trekking maps have little dots which they say 1,800 uh, height, okay? If you follow this line, this is the contour, okay? If you draw, a, if you make there a trench, yes, exactly this. If you make there a trench, this is super efficient way to catch water because when the water goes in, it doesn't go either this side or this side. It has to be filled in, and then okay. the water goes because out. Because it's leveled. Because it's leveled. Yes, and you can make swells in your gardens, you can make swells on mountains that you go, and because you like them and you like to be more biodiverse. You can make swells everywhere. You uh, cannot make swells here. <laughs> My initial idea was to make a swell here, but uh, no, it's not a good idea. <laughs> and there is many easy ways also how to measure that you are on a contour. And you can find everything on the internet. I'm not going to go very deep on that. But you can make it yourself. An instrument of how to measure this. Okay? 
And the last one is small dams. You all know what is dams? Fragmata. Fragmata? Dams. Uh, it's like digger. Digger? Digger? In Italian. Digger in Italian. Yes? Yeah. Also, this quite uh, means quite a lot of studying by people to understand if it's actually good for the air that you're doing that, if it's good a dam to be built there. But that's a very good uh, technique to hold water and use it for watering, to use it for fishes inside, to, to, to create an ecosystem, etc., etc. Maybe if you have a, sp a spring inside your uh, your field or your farm, you can even make a lake, a natural lake. Where where I live, there is a natural lake with frogs, fishes, etc. Once there was well, nothing there, so it's an amazing way to also create ecosystems. Once there were a lot, but now there is very few because it was very rich in natural. These ecosystems are very rich in humus and in natural in uh, organic matter. That's why people use it a lot, exploit it, and now there are not many of them. So the idea is to create again. These ecosystems that fertilize, that give organic matter, and are very regenerative. Ba -ba! So this is uh, water in permaculture in 25 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> There is classes of many days about this stuff and don't be uh, like, ah, oh, fuck, I don't know anything, I, I didn't understand anything, it's very natural. I think that a small Q&A could be done. Do you think we have all the time for that? We can have it. Same for have it. questions? Yes, for questions. Can I add something? Yes, of course. I oh, just want to say that um, we can store water in another place that no one will see and no one will notice it. But we talked today, for example. We talked? We talked about it today. Mm -hmm. We also say the word of how we're going to use it. The soil! Oh. <laughs> actually, the soil, someone said the word spongy. Mm -hmm. So actually, it has all these holes so oxygen and water can be stored. So while we are increasing the quantity and the quality of the soil, we are actually creating a bigger mm. sponge, mm. the water to go in. This, for example, maybe you cannot imagine it in a big level, but it can happen. But in your garden, for example, it can reduce ridiculous amounts of water that you spend for watering. Mm. Like, this is something that you can measure tomorrow when you go back home. How to, to cover the, the, make it spongy and nice, and put layers on it, so, so it stores water more inside. And imagine this if it happens globally, can gain all this biodiversity, gain all this water, slow it down, store it, stopping, like, imagine, like, so that's why everything is interconnected, that we say. It's not nothing really, ah, soil, ah, water, ah. Yeah, and like, we do have the solutions. Yeah, yeah, we do. I, th I think like the previous days we were saying, like, we don't know what to do, uh, destructive problems. No, there are solutions. It's a matter of choosing them. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a beautiful project in, in, the, in a desert in Jordan, it's called Green Deserts, and you can see pictures of a desert turned in, into a jungle just by using these techniques. If this can be done, then everything can be done. <laughs>